Sorry, but we had to take a quick break for a second. I had to recharge the batteries on the video. So Danny was, uh, well, Sifu Danny was talking about his Wing Chun journey in the martial arts. So we'll go from that point on. Cool, yeah. I, I think we were, I was talking about I had left the military, went to college and dropped out, uh, went to trade school. Um, got into uh, auto mechanics and uh and diesel mechanics and started going in, into that direction. Uh, life came along, started uh, a family and um, ran into a, an, an old school buddy uh, and someone who had trained with Ernie Fournette years and years before. Um, so ran in the, yes. Um, ran into uh, another student that had trained with him at the time and he was doing Wing Chun. I said, oh, that's interesting. Um, let, me, let me digress, go back even further than that. Mm -hmm. My son, my oldest son, wanted to get into doing karate or doing something. And so we uh, took him in. He was young. And he was young, he was young. He was seven, okay. seven. Um, He's showing you that he was active already. <laughs> oh, yes. So he may have been as, then, as young as six. Yeah. Sean? Or, or yes, Sean. Okay. And uh, so my wife took him to, uh, to a place that someone else had talked about or whatever. And uh, when she came back home, she said, yeah, it's just Stephen Young. And I said, Stephen Young? I said, yeah, Stephen Young. So I know Stephen Young. <laughs> So I went and talked with him and uh, said, yeah, he, he found out he's doing Wing Chun as well. I said, I'd like to experiment and play with that. So he and I played together. Um, let me go back even further, and I apologize about that. No, no, no. As, as, my, as my old brain is beginning to remember things, I dig I'll digress even further. I had gone back to Arkansas, to Little Rock, to visit a friend of mine, a buddy that had been in the military. He had stayed in, I'd gotten out. Uh, and while there, there was a Wing Chun seminar. And I said, I want to go and see that. Because I had been exposed to Wing Chun when I was in the military. Kind of piqued my interest with it a little bit, but not super, super greatly. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's what piqued my interest to get back into training again. So I went to that seminar, uh, it was just a drop in, and not staying for the whole, it was a weekend seminar, I was there for the, the, the Saturday, uh, it had already been started probably two hours into it, mm -hmm. I met Francis Fong, and I can't say that I met him, he was the one that was doing the seminar, so I went oh. in, was, and, oh, I, really? and I was, uh, oh, they got you off again. 24, maybe at the time. So you know, you're still young then. Yeah. Um, yeah. With Wing Chun. And um, with Francis Fong. That's where I first met Francis Fong. Arkansas. Arkansas. At a seminar that he had done there. Okay. Uh, blown away. Everybody's still young looking at that time. <laughs> Sorry, you're saying yes. that. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, blown away. Totally. Completely blown away by this this man, wow. um, and and he just what he was doing was so different from what I was doing had ever done before, and even the Wing Chun the guy that I had trained with when I was in the military, this was so far beyond what. So you can say was. that at that time when you saw at that you time I could see that that was not the same. It was not the same. Oh, that or was maybe lower level. What he had was, yeah, what the guy in the military had was lower, much lower level. Much, much, much lower level. Just the, the skill level was just unbelievably different. So that's not like, oh, that really caught my eye. So I, I played around that one weekend, got, my, got blown away uh, with the techniques, and, and I, mean, I couldn't do them. There was, you know, coming from. Couldn't do them. Couldn't do them, coming from, from a hard style. Yeah boxing, uh, Shotokan, 
into doing the soft style stuff that he was doing and at the speed at which he was doing it. Question. I've heard this before also. Wing Chun being soft and hard from different groups of people. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a combination of both. Yeah. Uh, Some I, people assume that it's just hard some of them and then other people think it's just soft. It's soft, yeah. Well, it's, but I think it's both also. It's, it's both. And, and I, I think when you really get into the deep levels of the different arts, most of them both, right. to get really high, high level with them. Uh, I'll tell a story. Shotokan. Yes. Shotokan, is a, Shotokan is a, uh, a hard style, considered a hard style. Right, right. Uh, well, that's what I, they presented out there. Right? Yes. From when I was young until now. I ran into, and I, gosh, I can't remember how, uh, it must have been at a seminar that I, I met a man. And how old was this? You, I mean, like, what? I mean, like what age were you at? I was, I was in, in my 20s. In my, in my maybe late 20s. Okay. Now, not when you were in your teens, right? No, 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 That's no. That's the reason no. why, like, this you was, said Soto Kano, though. Yeah, but the, I ran into the gentleman at a JKD function. Seminar, there was a, and I, uh, I think that's what it was. This is, okay. And again, I was in my late 20s, maybe early 30s, but I don't think I was that old. Anyway, a uh, man by the name of uh, Kaylor Atkins. Uh, and I, I was really, really impressed with him. He was, he was an older guy. Uh, I was impressed with the fact that this old guy was training mm -hmm. and then training as hard as what he was training. Uh, we went out to eat for uh, that evening. And uh, he was with the group that we were with and I just happened to be sitting next to him. So it was just pure co coincidence. And it's making, you know, making small talk and stuff, you know, how long you've been training, who you train with, uh, uh, said he made the, I said, you obviously have some karate type training in your background. So, oh, yeah, he said, I did Shotokan for years and years. Uh, and I said, oh, have you ever been to Japan? He said, yep, sure have. He said, matter of fact, I got to train with, uh, Funakoshi. You? Yeah, no, he did. Oh, yeah. no, not, no, oh, no, not me. Uh, Funakoshi was, no. No, no. You said you traveled 30 something countries. Oh, I yeah. Like, oh, you to Japan and learn from he, these guys. Uh, <laughs> I said, you train with Funakoshi. He said, yep. He said, I, and, I, and I can't, and he says, I, I can't say that I trained with him, but I trained in his school. I trained in the Shotokan. And, uh, of course, you know, they had other instructors and stuff. And he said, I was able to touch the old man twice in doing, you know, their drills and all the stuff that they were doing. Said I got to touch him twice, and he said, "Guys, we got this all wrong." He said, "Here we are doing all this hard hitting and banging and tempering and all this stuff." And he said, "And when Funakoshi touched me, he was soft." Oh my goodness! He said he was soft, but he had total control. And mm -hmm. some of the you know, says, so "I'll go back to the other guys." Man, guys, what we're doing, what he's doing is. Cody did. Well, the old man is old. He can't do it anymore. He's not. He said, "No, man." He said he had total control of me the whole time. I oh, couldn't oh, do wow. anything. So that kind of, and I, I don't know how much embellishment there was with that or anything, but he was very, very impressed with the fact that Funakoshi was soft, and that was the big thing on all of it. He said he trained for a very short period of time with Bruce Lee. And he like said, one well, on one? Uh, or in the schools? In the schools or whatever. But he said, but, but when he, he said, when he felt Bruce Lee, he said that was the first time he ever felt anything that was similar to what he felt with Funakoshi. Bruce Lee? Yep. Um, wow. So that kind of piqued me. It just brought my, you know, so. When at first we were just thinking he was just an actor on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Until he touched him. So. <laughs> And that's why I said it was a, it was a JKD thing because he stayed with JKD mm. because of what he felt with Bruce. So anyway, he, he continued to train with Bruce, but it was just a, a story right, right, that right. Okay. Funakoshi, oh, yeah. we, were do, we were doing all this hard stuff with oh. the training and we did, we banged hard and we, but this guy said that Funakoshi was soft. So that goes back to, is it really hard or is it soft? Or is it just can it hard enough to be in control? Right. Anyway, so so anyway, that that hard soft thing was Wing Chun. 
that's it's, the students it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard when it needs to be. It's soft when it's when it is, when right. it needs to be. And I think most of it's that way when you get to the higher levels. Yeah. So, and of course uh, we do it with you. You know, we feel the softness, and then it's like when you do it with the trainer partners, everybody's just hard. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't get to touch your soft. Well, that's <laughs> that's how I feel when I go with Sifu Fong. You know, <laughs> it, it's like when he hits you, bam! You just got hit by a piece of steel. <laughs> but then there's nothing there. You know, it's like he's still there, but you don't feel anything. Right. And you try to move and do something, you can't do it because he's got total control of you. Um, so, you know, there's, there's relativity, relativity between skill levels. Right. You know, so my skill compared to you may be this, but then my skill to come see well, Fong is the same thing, you know. So <laughs> I'm still trying to get to what well, his point was. Then. So anyway... I, I went to Arkansas, I went to that, uh, that seminar and just got, wow, yeah. wow, this little guy. And he was, you know, he was young at the time. I was still young at the time. And yeah, it's yeah. just, so that I would like to have that. Now there's nothing around this area to be able to have anything like that. So anyway, I go back home and this is a couple of years later that I find out that Stephen Young is in town and he's got a school and he's doing some Wing Chun. So I went and son's training there. I said, yes, I, I, I want to play with you and do Wing Chun. So I did. Okay, so your son was there and with he, you? Yes. Awesome. Uh, now, he was, he was also doing some uh, uh, Thai boxing. Okay. And he Wait, Thai boxing already? Mm -hmm. He was. My son, yes. So Sean? So when I put Sean in, we put him in everything. Okay, so Sean was already doing Wing Chun. He's doing some Wing Chun. He's doing Thai boxing. So that's uh, when you got introduced to that too. So, <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> I went there for the this wing. <laughs> so I went there for the wing chun. And uh, when I felt Steve, I was like, "That's not the same thing." But Steve was good. And Steve was, uh, we're, you know, we're we're all peculiar in our own ways. Steve was very peculiar in his own way, but he was a very good martial arts instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. through Steve, I met Sifu Fong again and was able to actually train with Sifu Fong. Okay. Oh, and wow. that's when I started really training and said, this is what I want. Wow. Um, I had seen Muay Thai. I had seen Kali when I was in the, uh, in the Philippines. Okay. So seen um, that I mean, I, what, you had a... I didn't have a taste of it. I've seen it. Seen, I've seen it. In the military. Right. Okay. Uh, I saw Kali just, you know, it, it's a small group of guys, three, four guys uh, in the park banging away with sticks, you know. I said, well, these are a bunch of idiots. <laughs> in the military. <laughs> <laughs> so these guys are a bunch of idiots. And then they, they, saw they were doing some sparring and stuff. And I said, these guys are, those guys are crazy, man. They got sticks in their hands and beating each other up with sticks. <laughs> uh, like, I mean, that's, what is it just as bad? Putting gloves on, punching each other out? Yeah, you're right, thing. you're right, you're right. It's just it, it, he's got a stick in his he's hand doing it, you know? So, uh, the concept of it changes, right? <laughs> yeah, those guys are nuts, man. <laughs> we can sit there and pound each other and kick each other. but So anyway... Uh, through Sifu Fong, I met Arjun Chai, of course, Guru Dan, okay. and just, so that's just where the whole kind of filtered through all of that yeah. and everything went through that. And just, so they didn't have anything like that here. Here there was Shotokan, mm -hmm. Steve was teaching some Wing Chun, a little bit of Muay Thai, but... For a while, too. Even yeah, he's taught for a long time. But not I mean like in Louisiana. Like well, it's still, all the mixed yeah, yeah. It, well, they didn't have it. I mean, yeah. it's just, it wasn't there. You, if you wanted, it was either Taekwondo or Shotokan right. or some type of you know, Ishinru or something. Yeah. There was a, a couple of schools that were doing that kind of stuff. It wasn't that mixed like what you were no, getting no. into. No, no. So I had to travel. So I would go to Guru Dan and go to, to Dallas and go to Dallas. Or to Chai would go to Dallas and go to Dallas. Um, uh, Super Farm was in Atlanta. I'd try to, Traveled to Atlanta, went to California, went back to Arkansas, went to Tennessee, went to New York. Wow. Um, 
and then uh, um, the way I got it in to um, um, anyway, I started continuing to train with Sifu Hall, and that's where my love for Wing Chun really came in. And and then the the man was such a good person, um, and that's the biggest reason why I stayed with him was that Analogy. his skill was good, his personality, his his. Mm -hmm. uh, he made you feel like you were part of his family. Yeah. You know, just. Uh, Definitely, you get that vibe. From you yeah, that. yeah. When I go visit. Uh, and his energy level, mm -hmm. just so full of energy, and, and the love of what he does as far as with, with the martial arts. Uh, so that's how I got into Wing Chun, and I just I stayed mm -hmm. with it. Um, Ended up becoming an instructor for Steve and taught in his school. And then uh, when he closed the school, he moved out of town. What year was this? Or how old? 97? I think it was 97. Maybe it's 97. He closed the school and yeah, had a bunch of guys that were there I said guys I want to continue to train and I'll, I'll let's let's just uh, train so I started uh, teaching in uh, the city park because uh, I wanted to be able to continue to train yeah and I wanted my sons to be able to continue to train so I said okay I'll I'll, I'll put together the program and whatever and started teaching at city park and we, we teach two nights a week um, and at the time, were you teaching just Wing Chun, or were you mixing it with more Thai? And I was doing everything. I was, I was doing an hour of Wing Chun, an hour of Muay Thai, and an hour of Kali. And then inside of all three of those, I was doing a little bit of wrestling. Nice. And so that was sort of the, the beginning for me in my, my, my thought processes and teaching was because I was incorporating some wrestling. Cause at that at that time, uh, MMA, they, this was ninety seven. Wow. The yeah. MMA was not here. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it uh, was like in Japan, I think it was. It yeah. Like oh yeah. There was there was in Japan and, and in um, in Brazil because they had the. Um, oh yeah, this. That's, that's right, Brazil. Um, Brazil. But they were they were doing yeah, um, but it wasn't here. But I mean, like as in broadcast but, on TV the show. Was right. In Japan when they were doing these weird oh, yeah. matches. Oh <laughs> yeah. Shuto and stuff. Shuto, yeah. yeah. But uh, so here, now, and, and maybe there was, because of that, there was some effort way out in uh, California and stuff, but because uh, some of the, because like Eric Paulson was in Shulto and he was training over there doing. Right. So uh, jujitsu was just beginning to come in into the area. There was only a couple of people that, that had it. And then they were traveling to, to be able to get, get jujitsu. Like I traveled to get all the other stuff that I had. Um, so anyway, I started interdispersing some of the wrestling stuff that I had for takedowns and, and to be able to have them on a realistic measure. If you're going to be doing self-defense, you're going to end up going to the ground somehow or another. Uh, so my train of thought was, how do I integrate that within the Wing Chun? How do I integrate? And then, and then well, and then Sifu Fong, uh, his attitude toward it was the same thing. Uh, he even got, matter of fact, he got to the point where I guess it was in, in the mid, in the mid 90s, maybe as early as 93, 94, um, in order to become a, an instructor under him, you had to have high level training, what he, he called high level training in two, two other arts. And so, you know, at the time he was teaching Wing Chun, and he was beginning to interdisperse other stuff into what he was doing. And he made, it, you want to be an instructor under me, you have to have high level training under two other arts. Other, wow. and it has to be, uh, it, it has to be two other arts, and it could be a striking art and a grappling art, but it couldn't be two striking arts. He wanted something, he, he wanted his instructors to be well rounded and to have more than just one thing. Yeah, which was very unusual rare. at the time. Very rare, yeah. And maybe non existent at that time in America. Yeah, well I think in in a lot of the well 
I, I, I'm not sure, Johnny. Um, I, I think that there was like a school line. In a school, yeah. A school I thing. think I think there were individuals that recognized that hey, I don't know anything about ground fighting. I'm going to learn how to do that, but mm -hmm. but I'm going to keep it to myself. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas he was like, no, you need to you need to have it. <laughs> He's making you need to have it. Um, go train with Arjun Chai. Go train with Guru Dan. Go train with so and so. You know, with uh, Hey Diego at the time for oh, yeah. um, uh, Jiu Jitsu. Or whatever, you know, go train with them, and then come back. Yeah. And uh, that open mindset helped a lot. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now he had a. Um, he started in his martial arts in Taekwondo. Oh yeah, I was going to ask you about him. Like, do you know his and, background? Is? And then somebody should do an interview. <laughs> well, he's had several <laughs> of them like done, this. but he, uh, yeah, he, he started in Taekwondo and then went into Judo and a school buddy of his introduced him to Wing Chun. He was in Wing Chun training and so he and That's what he met, was it? Jiu Wei. Okay. Right. Uh, Jason Lau Jason was, Lau. was his, his buddy, his, his real good friend. And uh, Jason was, was already a year or whatever in the Wing Chun, and okay. he said, "Man, you need to come. You need to come." And finally, he went, and the, so he right. stayed and stayed with Wing Chun. He started with Japanese karate. He started with uh, Taekwondo, sorry, which is taekwondo. Korean, I'm right? Sorry. And then, and then, <laughs> uh, right, and then uh, Judo, and so he had a, a little bit of throwing and groundwork. He had all the kicking and stuff from Taekwondo, and so he went into Wing Chun. He went from the kicking range into the throwing range, mm -hmm. back into the punching, kneeing, elbow range. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he had sort of a, uh, an overview of all of it. And his attitude was, hey, you gotta be in the fight no matter where you are, mm. you know. Right. So, and then of course about that time, was, uh, the, the Bruce Lee thing kicked off and you know, all the stuff about being well-rounded and everywhere. Oh yeah. So anyway, coming back to, me at the time, my how do I interdisperse uh, wrestling with everything else that I was doing? And then it got to the point where, uh, and you need to do Muay Thai. Wow, well, just like Wing Chun. I, I know, but you need to do Muay Thai. <laughs> it's going to make your Wing Chun better. Right. And and I know that it is because it made my overround game better. You suck at this range, and you don't know how to get to this point. Go do Muay Thai, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then as I started doing uh, uh, Kali, I, I, again I had been I'd seen Kali when I was in the Philippines and thought those guys were crazy, <laughs> and ha had had someone uh, said, "Man, you need to come in the New Orleans with me." There's a guy over there that does uh, Filipino martial arts, and I said, "Well, what is that?" And they said, "You know, it's just a different type of fighting, and they use uh, swords and knives and stuff." And, I said, knives, are you crazy? <laughs> I said, knives will get you cut, man. Oh, but yeah. here's, a, here's a little funny thing. You're a guy that use, in the military using machine guns and all these stuff, and you're talking about knives. <laughs> so it's like, uh, what, what, like we're well, dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're all dangerous. <laughs> yeah. So, Go ahead. <laughs> so um, I went with him to New Orleans to a... Uh, a class that he was doing at, at Filipino martial arts, Pegida Tertia Kali, um, Omar Hakim, Guru Ho Omar Hakim. Yes, you mentioned So Bible. that's where I first saw Pegida Tertia and then came back and Steve started, yeah, let's do that. So we started training Pegida Tertia in the school. Steve was left-handed, uh, everybody else was right-handed, so <laughs> was able to work left-handed work with him in, in the with the stick work and everything and the sword and knives and stuff. And then I met um, Tom Bill. Uh, Omar moved to uh, Plano uh, area in Dallas. Quick question. At that time, you said you were training also Piki, uh, I mean, not Piki, um, Guru Dan. No, I, I mean, like I said, I was training with Guru Dan. Okay. I had trained, I'd gone to a couple of seminars with him. Okay. Uh, but you got introduced to the screamer too, then. Um, yeah, but he wasn't. He, he was. He wasn't. He wasn't doing a lot of it in that 
in the seminars that I went to. So he he started he started doing yeah. He was well he was doing John Fon. Oh not, yeah, John not, Fon. Not yeah. JKD. Not JKD. He was doing John Fon. Sorry guys. <laughs> no, no, that and that you know that there's a there's John Fon and there's JKD. Right. And JKD was an outbreak of John Fon. John Fon was Bruce Lee's martial arts. Mm -hmm. JKD was Bruce Lee's philosophy and the way that he trained going into the, into the, uh, and then he developed it as an art mm -hmm. and, and dropped a lot of the stuff that he was doing in John Fon. But the way to truly understand Bruce Lee's JKD was through Wing Chun and through John Fon. Because mm. there were things in John Fon that he didn't do with JKD, now but but sort of sort of a, it was a stepping stone for him. Yeah, you know, this, how, is, this is his journey. This is his journey, right? So, my journey was I had done some training with um, did some seminars with, with Guru Dan. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not going to say that I trained with him. a lot of people say that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. You, you go one time, you train with him. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. You're not really you, trained you, the you attended a seminar with him. Um, anyway, going back to, to Omar, Omar moved to uh, to Dallas, and he had a seminar where he was going to bring. Um, I, I'm assuming, and so this is strictly my assumption, that uh, he was going to try to bring uh, Leo Gaihe in, oh. who was the the the, the head of Bikini Tertia. And um, this other gentleman, Bill McGrath, came in instead. And so that's how I met Bill. And uh, Bill at that time, he wasn't a Tuhan at the time, he was a Matasana Guru. Uh, he was going around and doing seminars that Leo couldn't get to. So Leo may have been going to a seminar in California and he was sending Bill out to do seminars elsewhere in, in his stead. Uh, so he was double booking and then sending Bill out to do seminars. And, I, and I'm thinking that that's how Billy ended up tying up with Omar. Okay. So anyway, that's, that's uh, you know, and so. You were traveling I, out to New Orleans a lot too then. I was traveling to New Orleans, uh, yeah. While uh, I was teaching over here mm -hmm. in Louisiana with the others out in the park. Yeah. Or you didn't open the school yet, did you? No, I, well, no, I was in the park. No, at that, that, that time, no, I was, uh, I was, uh, no, no, I wasn't at the park. I was uh, teaching for Steve. Oh, okay. Steve and Young. Sorry, yeah. yeah. And, uh, he didn't leave yet. Right. And so that was... Man, this is so interesting. <laughs> that was relatively that was relatively early, early 90s. Um, okay. So anyway, I, I met Bill McGrath. Yeah. And I was like, wow. So I really I, I got more in depth into Bikini and uh, because of Bill and then Bill was just a uh, he was a pleasant person, uh, strong morals, um, pushed morality, pushed integrity mm -hmm. within the individual, um, and so here's another person like Super Fong. Strong morals, strong ethics. Yeah. Uh, Guru Dan, strong morals, strong ethics. Bill McGrath, strong morals, strong ethics. Uh, began to rub off on me. Oh. <laughs> 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 you see it. You know. It's on me. <laughs> uh, so, and and it, and that's it's a take off on my father because my father was strong morals and strong ethics, but he was my father, so you know it's like. You had a limit to it, right? Right, you know, come on. There. <laughs> anyway. All right, so we're back at it. We had to take a quick break again. Uh, so, um, get back to what we were talking about with uh, Coach Danny. About, we, were, we left off at uh, talking about um, your father um, yeah. teaching you about. Talk, talking about the different uh, instructors and why I stayed with them because of their morality and their ethics and then. Mm -hmm how that was a continuation of what my father was. Right. Um, so anyway, I continued to, uh, to travel and train. Um, I think we were talking about Omar 
and, and how I got into uh, with Chuhan Bill. Um, and just continue to, to train and to work to uh, sort of consolidate all of the things that I had together. And that's where IMS came from, was sort of my personal take on all of the things that I had been exposed to. Um, from the Shotokans, from the Taekwondo that I had when I was in the military, to uh, Hapkido that I've also worked with a gentleman with for about two years, um, Ishinru. So it's sort of my uh, consensus of all of those things coming together and how do I tie all that together for me, not for other people, but for me. And that was my own personal sort of thing. Which a lot of people say, well, that's what JKD is, you know. And I said, well, no, JKD is different. That's what Bruce did, and he has some certain that's like things. That's like a whole that, debate about that. Well, that, there's some things that are specific. <laughs> that that's there's some to, get into debates about that. <laughs> to John Fon and JKD, you know. Right, those so two separations. Right. So, um, and and through Guru Dan, and of course, and and uh, Sifu Fong, uh, done. Teaches, uh, I've, I've done a bunch of, of the John Fon. Mm -hmm. I've done. Uh, a little bit of the, the JKD concepts and everything. Right. But I tend to stay away from it because uh, there's so much controversy. And, right. and yeah, you know, uh, Guru Dan is phenomenal. And there's so many guys out there that feel that he's done a disservice as far as for JKD goes over that he changed it and all this stuff, you know, and I'm like, so I, I, I don't want to get into all the politics. I, I hate the politics of it. so. Right. Uh, I, I train it. Got there, so. Oh yeah, I train with uh, what I train with it. I understand it. I move on and leave it alone. So anyway, going back to IMS. IMS is my personal take on everything that I've been exposed to and what I've absorbed, mm -hmm. and how do I use it for me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not a it's not a concept. It's not a it's a how I use it for me, and then from there the growth of it is. I started injecting that into, as I was teaching, certain things just sort of bled in. So I try to keep Wing Chun as Wing Chun. I try to keep Muay Thai as Muay Thai. But there are some things with some individuals, such as yourself, that have trained with me for a while that have you have looked at both sides, you've played with. So how do we tie it together? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you make it work for me. Exactly. Not exactly, for not for for you, right. and it doesn't it doesn't matter what I can do, it doesn't matter what my instructors can do. It's what can you do, and what do you need to do that's best for you? And that's one thing that's good about it that you never hold us back. You let us teach, what, go anywhere, and learn anywhere. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, that's a great idea. And and great opportunity. There's uh, the method that I use to teach you. It's going to be different from what I teach to someone like Greg. Or to someone I teach like Mark or whatever, because because everybody's different. Everybody has you absorb information differently. I'm a You're, slow learner. <laughs> no, uh, it's just that it's just the way that you learn is different. There's different ways of learning, and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you what's best for you to learn for that you to absorb it. I'm gonna teach Mark different. In a big class, it's hard to do. Oh yeah, it's very difficult. That's a big class. And so. That's why a lot of times I explain things three or four times, three or four different ways. <laughs> and some people look at it and go, why are you changing it? Yeah. Well, no, because I'm teaching Johnny and I'm teaching Mark and I'm teaching Bill and I'm teaching Jake and everybody's absorbing something a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. And so. And everybody's not picking it up fast enough too sometimes. Some people pick it up faster than the others. It, yeah, absolutely, certainly. You absolutely. Get lost in the, in in the translation somewhere, right? It happens, you know. So that's so. IMS one, once um, uh, I've moved progressive martial arts on to Jake, then IMS is me, all of my stuff, and then how do I take individual bits and pieces and tie it together to where I can pass that on to you that way, mm -hmm. so that it works for you, not for me, for you. That's what IMS is. And then if anybody wants to do just Wing Chun, that's fine. We can do just Wing Chun. Or if they want to do just Muay Thai, that's fine. We can just do Muay Thai. But within that Muay Thai, you're going to get some Wing Chun. 
I was supposed to ask you, like, <laughs> let's say if you want to open up a school under you, is it going to be the same as how Francis Fong made it? You no. Have have three it, different arts, ground, and stand up? Or you're going to be okay with just Wing Chun alone? I know. It's I, I don't think I have a student that has only Wing Chun <laughs> or only Muay Thai. <laughs> I was about to say, like, yeah, I don't know. E even those that only, only train Muay Thai, in that class, if they stay with me long enough, they will they will see some wrestling they will see some jujitsu they will see they they will see some and and i i never say it they'll see some hapkido they'll see some taekwondo even though i'm not saying it that's what it is or where it came from they will see it yeah I, 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 you know we all we i'm proponent myself i'll start out with wing chun you know i i didn't want to try to this i didn't want to try that with you at first, but then eventually you just incorporate it into my life. I just didn't even realize it. And next thing you know, you need, you're, you're like deep into it already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, That's how you did it. I think, well, and I think it's that. a good thing. Yeah. Because you, you know, what's applicable and when is it applicable? Mm -hmm. Wing Chun has a range at which it's applicable. Mm -hmm. And if you try to do Wing Chun in Muay Thai range, you're going to get your butt whipped. And that's how I learned. <laughs> you put me with the Wing Chun guys, and then you transferred me over to the other guys as far with them, and next thing you know, I'm getting my butt whipped, and I was like, okay, I need to learn this Muay Thai stuff. <laughs> and you, the ground game stuff. You know, it's funny. We, we had, uh, you know, we used to bring the, the, the Muay Thai guys that only did Muay Thai every now and then over to the Wing Chun guys and say, okay, you're going to spar. And the Muay Thai guys would come in, oh, man, oh, yeah. And it's funny how every time we did that, they walked away going, man, I respect the heck out of those guys. <laughs> wow. Didn't realize how good they were. Didn't realize how tough they were. Mm -hmm. Here we are with shin guards on and everything. And they just got gloves on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they, on. And they, they walked away, you know, with, with a deeper, <laughs> deeper appreciation of, of yeah. the training, even though they didn't do it. Yeah. But, there, you know, there's a lot of you guys that, um, that did, and, and I push everybody. Yeah, don't, do. don't, you, know, you, you want to do Muay Thai? That's fine, great, do Muay Thai. But go and research some Wing Chun. Go actually train some for a while. Mm -hmm. Go get on the ground and wrestle and grapple yeah. or do some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Go spend some time on the ground doing it because it's only going to make your understanding of what you already have better. Yeah. Um, That's what made me grow. Go, go get a stick and swing a stick and have someone swing a stick back at you. All of a sudden, <laughs> hands move slow compared to that stick coming at you. Uh, so your timing becomes so much better. Your footwork becomes so much better. And your understanding of angles and, and yeah. changes yeah. becomes so much better. Yeah. And that's, so that's what IMS is, is a, is a sort of a, my, my integration of everything that, I, that I've learned. So mm -hmm. if, if I have a, a piece of Wing Chun that will help me when I'm throwing a left hook, then I'm going to use it instead of doing a left hook, plain and simple, you know. Awesome. That's awesome to know. Um, now, curiosity, did you ever try into, like, the other uh, kung fus, like, like with, um, you know. Hungar or something like that. Or Hungar, tai chi. I, I, did you ever try I did Tai Chi, uh, yeah. Hungar. Even, like, Moi Buran, instead of Moi Buran, like, like Cambodian martial arts or something, did you try anything other stuff, or, or you never did, or you got introduced to it? Um, or Tai Chi? Y yes, okay. uh, but not deep. Not right? So, uh, I have uh, done some, um, um, gosh, I'm having a senior moment, Johnny, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I've done Tai Chi, yeah, and okay. I, I, I think I already said that, but I've done a, a, a little bit of Bondo. Okay. I've done. Um, oh wait, bando. Um, um, bando. That's. Um, which what culture is that again? That's. I forgot already. I heard know the name Ma bando. Bando's not a Thai. Is it Thai? Yeah. Um, I've done. Um, man. I'm losing my martial arts. What's, right what's the <laughs> um, Burma Burmese some Burmese boxing. Burmese boxing. Um, I've done some knuckle, bare knuckle boxing, <laughs> thinking of that, but just the Burmese <laughs> boxing because they, they just do the, 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 the light wraps. Yeah, just 
no, no gloves or anything. So and they use their head. And they head use their head, head butts, elbows and head butts. Now, uh, where'd you get introduced to that? Uh, through Guru Dan. Through Dan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, he does. Through Guru Dan. Does, uh, and I'm not going to say I, I, I've done a lot of it, but because I haven't, but I've done some. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was interesting. I've done Monday Muda Silat uh, through uh, Pa Herman Sawanda. Um, did um, about three, four years. Indonesian. Of, of, uh, yeah, in, Indonesian Silat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Pinjak, Pinjak Silat. Wow. Um, well rounded people. Well, I, I... Oh, back to the Tai Chi. Yes. Which one? Because I know there's a soft and a hard. Uh, <laughs> that confuses the heck out of me, too. Young, young style. Young style. So that's a hard one. No, it's soft. It's soft. Very soft. Okay, I'm getting the names wrong. Sorry. Young style. Oh, look at you. Yeah. <laughs> still is. Do you still do it? or? or? I, I do it a little bit for myself. I don't teach it anymore. Um, I, I did. I did. It. Yeah, oh, yeah, I did. I, I taught it for a couple of years. Uh, why, for us. While, while you no, while you were training with us, I was teaching. Uh, well, I was teaching it in the mornings. That's right. I was teaching oh it in the mornings. Goodness. I missed one by y'all. <laughs> you did teach. I did. Did take a little class with you. I think like one time or I twice. Did, I did, yeah, and, but I was doing, uh, and I had uh, about twelve or thirteen people that uh, was doing it with me. I remember doing one or two classes with you, but it didn't it didn't click with me. It well, it's different uh, for a lot of people. And then if if you're if you're in the the realm of of fighting, yeah, that's why. Then is. most people go to Tai Chi and go, you can't fight with it. Yeah. Well, the problem with that, and it, I think, please explain it's, to me I what think, your theories on Tai Chi, because there's a lot I of think, people out there has I think distorted the, it so bad. I think the biggest problem with it is that nobody spars it. Yes. Nope. So. They, they go and they do these nice slow moves. Well, that's great for learning the mechanics, mm-hmm. learning and feeling the movements, learning and feeling the changes in your center of gravity. Mm-hmm. It's like doing Sulam Tao with Wing Chun. Uh, you, you're learning these positions and how to get to these positions, but you're not learning what you're doing with them. And so you can sit there and do the form, which is what oh, Ernie Fournette used to say is air dancing. <laughs> Air dance. Love it. <laughs> you just 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 in the air doing all the stuff, but there's no there's no concept there of what's the range that I'm doing it at. What's the timing at which I'm doing it? I'm doing it very nice and slow. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, fighting is speed chaotic. and chaotic, and and it's movement and changing, mm-hmm. and and your relationship to me changes drastically mm-hmm. from this angle to that angle or much less distance mm-hmm. so tai chi is trained for the most part just as a form yeah. i was fortunate that my tai chi instructor said you're gonna fight <laughs> good <laughs> and again here's the movements where's it in the form this is this is a potential move and that was his now, big where was this at that time uh, tai chi, your first time experiencing it. My first experience with Tai Chi was in Arkansas. With who? I have no idea. Can't remember the guy's name. Oh! I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. Just, it's all right. It's one of those chance things that we were playing around when I was still in the military and everything, doing the guy does Tai Chi, so we went, okay, let's do Tai Chi. Played with him for a little bit and everything. It was a, for a few months. That was my first introduction to it. That. But but his was only just doing the form, okay. you know. Uh, and then and then after that was playing with other people who said they had tai chi, and in some aspects I said, no, you you have less than I do. <laughs> and others you had you you appear to have more than I do and have a better understanding. And then there was a lady here in town, uh, Cynthia Gardner. I trained with her for a bit. She had trained tai chi for a long time, she, and she trained with. Dr. Yang Wing Ming. Well, go look him up. He is well known. He's written probably 20 or 30 different books on Tai Chi. Yep. Dr. Yang Wing Ming. Uh, I'm going to ask you later. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I trained quite a bit with her. Uh, How many years? Her thing was 
just the form though. And then here's, oh. here's and, well, I don't know, let me say that, no. Here is some application, but never Spark. And so again, and, and uh, the first time that I ever saw her spar, it was obvious that she never sparred with it. Gotcha. But she was very good at the form, and she was very good at being able to explain different potentials okay. to do it. Yeah. But she could not fight, yeah. and there's a big difference. Yeah. And that's the, I think that's the one number one takeaway that I got with all of my training is you got to go bang. You got to go. Absolutely. Someone has to punch you in the face for you to realize <laughs> how, do, how do I not get punched in the face? <laughs> and then how can I maintain my composure? How can I be remain calm, relaxed mm -hmm. while I'm being punched in the face so that I can punch you in the face and, and stop you from punching me? And be able to do it right. <laughs> yep. Do those, do those things that I've learned in that martial arts. So yeah, I've seen lots and lots of... Tai Chi has that issue. Wing Chun has that issue. I mean, oh, I agree. I agree 100 percent. That's why I made you guys bang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. That's it. And I, I think my my biggest pride is in the fact that most of the people, most all of the people that has trained with me over the years, if they've trained with me for at least two years, can fight. <laughs> or protect themselves. Yes. In, 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 yes. In the, Self and, and, when, and then when I say that, I mean, I've had kids come up. Yeah, I've seen know, that. And then there's some, you know, you, you, you give them what they need as children, not as adults, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. I don't want them going out fighting and everything, but they, most you of those. one heck of a job teaching well, them kids. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, That's, I love it. I learn something every time when I'm around them. When I used to, when I used to live out here and train out here with you at, when the kids were around and you needed help. <laughs> Yeah. I definitely learned something about myself with those kids. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you do. Johnny, <laughs> you know? And then, with that. And, and you know, the, the more, <laughs> I think, I, I really believe this, the more that you spar, the more that you actually get out there and, and bang, the humbler you will become. Mm -hmm. uh, your confidence level goes way, way up uh, because you're going to get hit. You're going to get banged. And, you, you walk in and you go, oh, I, I want to spar with him. And you realize real quickly, oh, one he's a lot better than I am. One thing I do remember, and a lot of us probably will say this, is that damn wall he puts us on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. can't hit back. <laughs> yeah. You know, you defend oh yourself. Oh, my God, round after round after round. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's funny. In, in the martial <laughs> arts, you know, ranking is, rank is so important. Everybody's looking for that almighty black belt and always... You know, how long is it going to take me to get the black belt? What can I, you know, and I'm like, man, just, just train, you know. You're going to know what your rank is when you get out there and you start punching and kicking. You know really quick, yeah. oh, man, I need, to, I need to do it some more. Yeah. And the others, you know, you go, whoop, hey, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I, I thought that guy was going with my butt. I'm, I was able to discipline myself pretty well against him. So <laughs> yeah. you know really quick when you go out there. If you just air dancing... You don't know who's. Yeah, absolutely. You know. you're, you're right about that part. Definitely, so. they can. You know, some people can tell you what belt they have until they move, and then you'll know. <laughs> well, and yep. As soon as it, well, as soon as you start moving, you're right. And then 30 seconds later, you definitely know if they've been training because right. 30. Uh, all of a sudden, they can't breathe. <laughs> Tired already. <laughs> so, yeah, cardio is important. Yeah. Cardio is important. Question I have. Um, well, this is we're not gonna get into the military just yet, but uh, it's a question about you, know, you mentioned about teaching martial arts, uh, taught martial arts to the military. Have you taught it to the military and the law enforcement or any kind of courses? Seminars? Yeah, yeah, I've done uh, I've done several different seminars and workshops for both um, military personnel, uh, sheriff's department, uh, city police department. Uh, I did, uh, I became a Monadnock instructor, which is uh, a def uh, police cell, uh, police defense tactics. Oh. Uh, Monadnock and control force are two of the 
the uh, governing agencies for defense tactics for the police departments. In Louisiana? In, or in, in the United States. In the U.S.? Yeah. Oh, didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> yeah, so That's I, cool. I became a Monagnock uh, instructor. A Monagnock. Monadnock instructor. Uh, and then Control Force is another agency. There's, there's several. Um, That's cool, man. That is cool. Didn't know that. And, I, and those, those seminars, whenever I've done those, those have all been uh, gratis. You know, just here, I return it back to the community. For, thank you for serving, you know. Uh, I've done several with um, Iberia City Department uh, and then the uh, Iberia Parish Sheriff's Department. Then it was Lafayette Sheriff's Department, uh, Church Point, uh, Opelousas. Uh, every now and then, you know, yeah, they'll contact me and want me to do something with them or whatever, but yeah, That's you know. Because I never even knew that. I mean, you mentioned it in a, you know, like years ago, but I didn't know how ex further extensive it because I never asked probably at all. <laughs> now I'm asking. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. You're still teaching it. That's and then, cool. I, I, yeah, I've done... Uh, uh, now, that's the police force, anything with the military? Uh, yeah, the, the National Guard, lo oh, yeah, uh, right. for both uh, uh, Lafayette, uh, here in New Iberia, Generette, um, Abbeville. I've done uh, workshops in Santa Marta for those guys. When they were getting ready to, when the 256th uh, Infantry Division was getting ready to go to um, Iraq, mm -hmm. um, they were going to, they were supposed to be doing uh, anti, they had an anti riot group or whatever. And so I did a series of, of uh, wow. uh, empty hands uh, versus edged weapon uh, tactics for them. Um, Didn't know that either. Awesome. Yep. Appreciate your, yep. Your, your service for that. <laughs> well, yeah, they need it. So, yeah. And that was, that was like many years ago or? For uh, the Iraq War. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm caught up with yeah. all the. That's all right. That's a, yeah. That's war. That's nineties. Yeah, no. Ninety five. Am I losing my mind? No, I think that was in like two thousands. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Yeah. Was two, there was two wars we had with Iraq. Well, well there was twenty eleven. Two thousand eleven is one, and then this one before the. Yeah. In the nineties, when they invaded Kuwait. Well, that's what all part of that. So it's all, yeah. I'm just losing my yeah. thought. So yeah, okay. yeah. But yeah. Um, do you have a favorite boxer of all time? Um, this is just like a fun question. Yeah, no, <laughs> and I, it's, it's yes and no. Uh, it's sort of like everything. There's uh, so many different styles. Um, so uh, Muhammad Ali, absolutely. Um, because of his footwork and his movement, uh, and he knew he knew how to play the mental game to boxing. Uh, so I learned a lot from him by watching him and studying him, mm -hmm. not only in in his fighting style, but his game, his mind games that he played with people. Uh, yes. So yeah, I liked him. I like Floyd Patterson because he's such a powerful fighter. Mm. Uh, so, you know, to say a favorite, um, it's kind of hard because it, everybody's got different styles. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed watching Sugar Ray Leonard because he was his hand speed was so good. Yes. Um, today, Canelo, Canelo. Saul Canelo, mm -hmm. uh, great technician. Well, me was great Pacquiao technician. Um, Pacquiao, I, I like Pacquiao. Um, I enjoyed watching him. Yeah. Um, as far as for being a favorite, I mean, he's he's high on the list, but no. Um, and uh, Floyd Mayweather is, as as a boxer, as a pure boxer, and and his athleticism and his work ethic, how can you not like that? Right. Uh, right. Tremendous. Yeah. Uh, him as a person, not so much. <laughs> Everybody's you know? got their favorite. On right? on the on the same note, I've never met him. I've never talked to him. I, I don't know. But just seeing how he does things in a way, but yeah. but when it comes to his athleticism and his work ethic toward boxing, that man works hard, and he worked very hard for everything that he's got. Yeah. You know, so 
That's good. That's, that's good. Good. Good explanation. Good way of letting us know what which boxes. You know, I was always wondering. You know. Yeah, that's question. cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, now going into the MMA, which MMA fighters do you would you do you have that you like to keep in yeah. <laughs> on your list? I don't. I don't watch MMA too much anymore. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I, I did for a little bit, but, uh, you know, and MMA went through a transition. Uh, and it's, it's still, every now and then I'll watch it, but uh, at one point it was, I found it was closer to being as close to pure fighting as what you could get, other than having weapons involved. Uh, and then they started introducing all the rules, and then rules changed the game. Yeah, before you used to and see them wear certain clothes. You knew he was a karate guy. He, he well, was, I was a I wrestling was, guy. Yeah, that, Back then, you that, like that? No, I, I'm talking about at that time, but not necessarily the fact that the guy was wearing a, a gi or whatever. You know, the clothes don't make demand. Right. You know, that's just an, an outward appearance. Uh, you, you can have the nicest looking clothes no, and be a scumbag. Like, but you knew anybody at that time, though? any specific guys out there during that time when they were still wearing those type of outfits any guy you liked it at that time that made you like oh i like this i like this style no i can't i can't say that no. not really i mean i enjoyed i enjoyed watching it but to say that oh man i really like him okay no um it's just i, I enjoyed the fights then because other so many people didn't know how to fight on the ground and so <laughs> There was there we made a it made a major transition over uh, guys the wrestlers did okay but they were, didn't know the jujitsu game mm -hmm. and so a lot of the, the jujitsu guys were beating everybody because but it didn't take long for people to learn their game mm -hmm. and and then rules changed yeah. uh, and well, as yeah, rules, rules changed and as rules changed that changes that changes the overall aspect of the fight itself. You know, why does boxing box the way that it do? You know, because of the rules of boxing. Mm -hmm. if, if boxing were allowed to have knees and elbows and takedowns, it would change the game drastically. If boxing were set up the way it was at one time where if someone was knocked down, that was the end of the round. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you know, they had rounds that went 30 minutes till someone was knocked down. That was the end of the round. Mm -hmm. You know, if they, if boxing were, the rules were changed, it would change the way that boxing is. Yeah. You know, why is basketball played the way that it is? Because of the rules that they have. <laughs> so the rules set up the way things are. So it's hard for me because in the purity of, of, a, of a fight, you know, one of my biggest peeves is people talking about going into a cage match in an MMA fight, going to war, or I'm going into combat. Bullshit. <laughs> From your experience, yes. <laughs> Bullshit. And, that, that's, <laughs> and I'm sorry to get onto that, that thing, but that's, you know, you're in a, you're in a competition. Right. You're not going to war. No. You're not going to combat. So that make when, when that kind of stuff happens like, uh, it doesn't make me want to watch it or anything so but i but i, under, I understand why they do that but this i don't care for it it's all for show yeah <laughs> but thanks for letting me know about your boxing though i, I, I like your list <laughs> um next question this, um let's see i'm trying to quote you but i'm not sure if it's the exact okay. word um sometimes you would say that during our training or just most of the time in our training um, you would say what you're going through right now has already been done to me. The pain that you are feeling has happened to me. Um, the things that I put you through, I have gone through it too. I'm not asking any more or less of you now. Go keep moving, uh, keep moving forward. That, yeah, one, that you say those. It not sometimes yeah. it's not in that form. Sometimes it is. And it's a mixture. Yeah. What I what I often say is it's, that I will never ask you to do something that I haven't done or that I'm not willing to do. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. That's, that's what I, I usually say. There are things that I have done in training that I'm no longer willing to do. There are things that I have done in training that I cannot do anymore. And there's a difference. Yeah. 
I can't do it because of injuries. I can't do it because of age. But it's still good training. There are things that I've done in training that wasn't good training. I'm not willing to do those. So I would never put somebody through something that I think is not good training because it, that could specifically hurt you or hurt a trainee or whatever. So I would never do that. But yeah, when I, when I put you on the wall and, and, uh, or, or make you so physically exhausted that you can't go anymore, you think you can't go anymore, I know that you can. Because I've been there. I would, yeah. If I ask you to do a thousand kicks, it's because I've done a thousand kicks. If I ask you to do whatever, it's because I've asked you, because I've done it. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and there's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about my instructors other than their personalities maybe. But as far as being a, an individual human being, there's nothing special. If they can do it, I can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. If you can do it, they can do it, right. and that's that's what it's all about. I was I was curious too because I was from the you came you know not just from the martial arts but also from the military and also from the school that you went to and you did all those sports that drive that you you know all that stuff. Sure, I, I think it's a it's a cultivation of all that. Yeah. You know, um, there's nothing as, as far as being able to do this. Stuff, there's guys out there that are far better at me than wrestling. There's guys out there that are far better than me than, than boxing uh, and individual things as a, as a cultivation of all of that. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that there are. But, you know, and then there are guys, <laughs> you know, it's, it's really funny. Uh, people have a mystique about who their instructors are and everything. So, a lot of them. So I, I, have, I have students who are, they respect me so much, but they're intimidated by me. <laughs> and, I, and I can use that against them, right? Especially in sparring. If they're intimidated by me, that's easy to beat, you know? So, all right. I have those that just respect me. They respect me as a, as a teacher. They respect me as a, as a human being. They respect me as a, as a, as a person. Uh, but they'll bang with me. Yes, they will. <laughs> okay. Then I have those who... But that who sets you apart from a lot of teachers. You're willing to bang with your students. <laughs> that's you're, yeah. Cool. yeah, you're right. Uh, they let the other but that, do it but that's, other. But that's also... Uh, it keeps me growing. Yeah, you're because, sure. cause, well, I don't have the same ability today as what I had 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. So... I was going to say that my next thing is that I have those who are fighters who, when I train with them, they don't need to say it. I know I can't hang with those guys. <laughs> I, can, I can still coach them. I can still teach them, but I can't hang with them. They'll whip my butt <laughs> so fast. And the, here's the mystique where people go, man, you got, you got students that can beat you up? Dude. I'm beyond my middle 60s. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed, I do. Admit it, you know? <laughs> yes, indeed, I do. And I said, and even before that, I mean, I had, when I was younger and I, I was still able to, I was at that sort of crossroad of uh, do I continue to spar hard and, and, and really go hard or, hey, I need to start conserving my body and saving my body. I had guys that would go, you know what? I can't hang with those guys. <laughs> Their level is just that much, and that, so you have you know you have amateur fighters, you have professional fighters, and within amateurs you have A, B, and C classifications, and in professionals you have A, B, C classifications. You know, I'm not an A professional classification fighter. That's a fact. Doesn't mean that I, I I'm pretty good at what I do, but can I train someone to be up to that point? Certainly, yeah, if they have that skill level that. and everything, that's Definitely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think one of one of the biggest senses of pride for me is that I have people like you who are good, well, who are good. Uh, I have <laughs> I have people who are like you and and several others who are modest, uh, who really don't know how good they are. 
Well, I didn't. I just, who really don't know how good I they just, are. I, I know. <laughs> and then we have others that are really, really, really good. Okay, so, uh, you know, you take someone like yourself. When you, when you went to uh, Thailand for the first time, and the fighters over there said, hey, we want you to come train with us. <laughs> they, I was surprised. They, they didn't do that because you're not good. Yeah, I was surprised. That's, well, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. So, and, and having that humility is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. But that's why, and I think you even said that in yourself, that Arjun Chai said, sir, what, why are you over there with the fighters? <laughs> and he said, yeah, go ahead and stay with the fighters, right? <laughs> No, no, he's like, he said, stick with him. That's what he said. You stay with him. So, yes, you see, that. and, that, and that's, that's because you have a level of skill and ability that says, hey, we want that guy with us. Yeah. You know? Very, yeah. Very humbling. It's good. So, I have people like you that, <laughs> so, that's, that's a great pride for me. Yeah. You know? That's a great sense of accomplishment. That's awesome. Thanks for that information. Yeah. Oh. Um, next question I can have here. Now, I know Francis Fong, Tuhan Do, Arjun Chai, Eric Paulson, they have different testing. Um, are your testing somewhat similar to theirs, or is it your own, your own, your own uniqueness in it, or is it a mixture of theirs also in it, from the testing? Yeah, I, 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 I tend to use their testing as a guide but my testing is probably harder than theirs. <laughs> and, it, and it's not that I want it to be harder by any means, but it's the fact that um, I represent their teaching. I don't represent them. I represent their teaching. Wow. That's I represent their standard. Wow. Not even looked at like that. And no, I, I don't. I don't. I don't look at myself as being their representative sure, I mean, like, by I any didn't means. Didn't expect that. Yeah. Like, wow, that's a good way of presenting. I am. I am a representation of their teaching, and their standard. And I want my students to be at least to that level, on a minimum. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. So, how do we keep the gene pool strong? By having the standard strong. Not by lowering the standard. So I keep it strong. And when you pass my test, you're passing their test as well. Because that's the standard, as far as I'm concerned. And it's tough. <laughs> so if, if you're, if you're, if you're going to go, if I'm going to bring you to Arjun Chai to test under Arjun Chai, then you will have already passed Arjun Chai's test. Yeah. That's before crazy. before you pass mine. <laughs> <laughs> so that I know, I know. You, you know. won't. You won't. Yeah, definitely impressing him. Well, and it's not. I don't do it to impress him. No, no, I mean like I that. Do, I mean. Yeah. Like. I, I do it. I do it because I want you to pass that standard. And then you're prepared for it. That's what and I'm you're ready. Presses him when he sees that. I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think all of them. <laughs> but I, I, but I don't do it for the impression. No, no, I don't no. do that for that. That's what I meant. I, like, I do it so that you get better. You know that you're gonna pass that test mm -hmm. because you've passed mine. You're gonna pass his. <laughs> That's what I mean. I don't mean it like as in like you're trying to impress the teacher. And I, no, and and I I do that I do that. To honor them, right? That's what I was trying to get at. Uh, and again, I don't represent them; they they represent themselves. I love how you put that. That's awesome. you know, that's uh, uh, they represent themselves. Right. Uh, you don't represent me, <laughs> but you represent what I've passed on to you, and that to me, that's far that's more imp than representing me. Yeah. I mean, who am I? I'm just another man. But <laughs> no, it's, you're not. it's oh yeah, I'm just another person. Changed my life. But but what? What you represent is what I've passed on to you, yeah. and the standard at which I passed it on to you, yeah. and that's. Those teachers that you train with, you know, are you all under black belts with them? Every single one of them, from two hundred. Of or all or of them? Yeah. No, I'm not. No, Each not of uh, all of them. Uh, or what kind of belt level are you at with them? 
which is well, I mean, I've, I've, because I've trained so many different arts, <laughs> I haven't trained all of them to that to that level by any means. But uh, and you know, and many arts don't have belts. That's true. You know, uh, you know, Wing Chun traditionally does not have a belt ranking system. Right. However, Sifu Fong he has utilized the belt ranking system within his teaching so that he knows where the individuals are and what information has been covered with them and everything. So under his program, and, and it's funny, a lot of people say well, Wing Chun doesn't have belts. Well, no, but it's a, it's a way of measuring, hey, has he met this standard right. that we have set forth? So there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But so under Sifu Fong's uh, association, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm a black belt. I'm, uh, okay. I'm a. Um, and now, Sifu Fong is the only one I know that doesn't have like black belt, red stripe, black belt, blue stripe. You know, it's like I don't. Yeah, he no, just, he all, he's just black belt. That's it. No, he he has in his school and and through the system he has, yeah, only black belt. Now he's got you know white belt, yellow belt, right. orange but belt. Once you belt get the black belt, that's it. No, that's no it. Other no other. No, then you have levels of instructor. And so you can be a level one instructor, a level ah. up to level five instructor. Ah. Then, then you go into, uh, he's got uh, apprentice instructor, and he's got levels of apprentice. He's got levels of associate. Then you have a level of full instructor, and I'm, I'm a full instructor, and I'm a senior full instructor under him. So, right. Yeah, and then I, I need to get that one up because you know a lot of people probably wonder about that. With you, yeah, <laughs> they don't know. You know, do you have ever achieved the belt I think, or not? I think, you know? I think, <laughs> they don't know some of them. <laughs> I think most people don't. are. <laughs> yeah, here's something that's really funny. I don't it's, think it matters C anyways. But. See, Sifu Fong gave me two black belts. <laughs> <laughs> he gave you two black belts? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. He tested me for a black belt twice, and he goes, "Oh, <laughs> so it's all right." <laughs> How did that happen? Yeah, just, <laughs> he tested just, me twice. Yeah, just one of those things, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> did you tell him? No. <laughs> No. <laughs> you just want to take that test again? <laughs> no, he asked me. He told me to test, so I tested. That's all, you know. Oh, you're just like, hey, you, you know. gave me a test. Test. No, I just, <laughs> I just looked at him kind of funny and said, okay, I'll, I'll test it. <laughs> what was this? Oh. Uh, new information? I didn't know this. <laughs> um, well, maybe gosh, somebody else might know, but I don't know. Gosh, uh, the second test, I don't remember, Johnny. Uh, <laughs> 2000s. Yeah, 2000, something like that. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> but, uh. Man, uh, from, from, from what you get, you know, for, from what, how he does it, his structure, how he does the belting, once you're a black belt, you really know your stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen oh, yeah. Students. Oh, yeah. You don't, you don't get to. Or other instructors. You don't get to a black belt with him. As a matter of fact, he has, he has, he has rank. And he has instructors. And so he has people who are instructors, and they're pretty good instructors mm -hmm. that have never attained black belt rank with him. And so, yeah, you're an instructor. And you could be an instructor as a, a, a green belt, as a um, brown belt. Interesting. Yeah, you can, you can instruct because he wants you to instruct. He wants people to instruct and pass on the, but to have rank under him. Totally different thing. It's a totally different thing. Oh, wow. Totally different thing. I didn't thing. even know that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, mean, he, that, but I never put it together like that. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah, well, uh, Pekiti's the same way. Okay. You can, you cannot get an instructor rank. Now, you can be a CT, certified as right. trainer. Right, yeah. And you can be a certified trainer in... Uh, in different parts of the system, and, and so you can teach, it. teach that, yeah. but that doesn't give you rank, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, I, and look, I was that way with Bikini for years. I had no rank in Bikini. <laughs> yeah, we know that. <laughs> I had no rank in Bikini. I had, you know, I had I had the whole system. I had all the information. I had, but you know, uh, and then and I was teaching, mm -hmm. and you know, I mean, <laughs> Tom, Tom Bill said, dude. <laughs> You gotta get your rank, man. <laughs> but you, you, you have to, you have to go and take a test and pass the test. And I just never did the testing and everything. So, but, so finally went through all that. But so, so yeah. So with uh, 
I'm I'm the uh, I'm a crew uh, in Muay Thai under uh, Arjun Chai. I'm a senior black belt uh, under uh, Sifu Francis. Uh, I'm a Matasana Guru master instructor under uh, Tilhum Bill and Piki Tertia. Mm -hmm. um, CSW. I'm a coach under CSW. He has coaches. He doesn't have. He has student levels and he has coaches. And so I'm, I'm a coach in uh, CSW in uh, his uh, striking system, which is uh, STX Savat mm -hmm. Thai cross training. Mm -hmm. And I'm a brown belt in uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That's a lot of, uh, a lot of arts. <laughs> let, me, let, me say, let, me, let me say this. With a lot of knowledge. I, I have ranking in those things. <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I I never sought rank. I right. never sought belts. I never there wasn't mm -hmm. anything. Uh, and I'm not gonna say that. Never, no. Uh, yeah, there was a time when I was young, when I was when I was a kid. You know, going through short Oh, yeah, I want to get my black belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, life was gonna change when I got my black belt. You know, and um, and it didn't. 